the graphic that you see off to my right, in order to get an incredible, incredible appreciation of the foresight in reference to this information, you have to keep in mind the research that was conducted, for example, a representation of this graphic, was done on July 15th, 2020. It has now been published this August 15th, 2021. And what we're looking at is a small bite of information of a huge compendium of data in reference to nutraceuticals in regard to the current pandemic event. So much is the wealth of information in this particular research that it will definitely serve a purpose even beyond the event of today. Now keep in mind too, I will be very cautious how I parse my words. I don't want to add anything that may be misleading. Keep in mind that sometimes we have to speak in something called circumlocutions, which is alluding to a terminology that was often utilized during the dark ages. Again, everyone's protecting you from information in your best interest, but I digress. But to proceed as follows, this is incredible. You see the zinc, the vitamin D, the beta glucon, and so on and so forth. The visual representation makes it easy for a lay person to basically look at and get a good understanding of where these particular nutraceuticals fit in the immunological puzzle in reference to mitigating negative outcomes in regard to the current pandemic. So with that in mind, let us proceed. And I want to bring your attention to, all right, here we go. See, there's the, our research article, review, combination of natural antivirals and potent immune invigorators, blah, blah, blah. Keep in mind, this was written before the... Um, the motivation in reference to uh, the um, exuberance of fact checking. So they wrote the article in the title with innocence, but however today we see many medical professionals and doctors and politicians, although in the best interests of society, still censored just the same. Dark ages, circumlocutions, blah, blah, blah. Review combination of natural antivirals and potent immune invigorators. Now let's see the date. August 15, 2020. Look at the PDF, just to show you that I was not joking around. July 15th, 2020. Sorry. And today is obviously 2021. August 15th is when this was published. I think today's August 17th. Yeah. We get kind of busy. All right. Proceed with the article as follows. I'm going to go into the abstract first. Now, keep in mind, there's so much information. It's a plethora of information in reference to nutraceuticals, vitamins, nutrients, so on and so forth, all across the line, that I'm really just trying to give you an appreciation and encouragement to basically review the research on your own and draw your own conclusions. So I want to read through the abstract first. So let's begin. The flare-up and severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, that emerged in December 2019 in Wuhan, China, and spread expeditiously worldwide has become a health challenge globally. The rapid transmission apps, and remember, this was written in July 15, 2020. So keep in mind, just finally published, but July 15, 2020. The rapid transmission absence of anti-SARS-CoV-2 drugs and inexistence of vaccine have further exacerbated the situation. Several drugs, blah, 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 we already covered through, are presently undergoing clinical investigation to further scrutinize their effectiveness and validity in the management of COVID-19. Fast forward to today. Natural products, NPs, in general, and plant constituents specifically are unique sources for various effective and novel drugs, immunostimulants, including vitamins, iron, zinc, crystalline, cafe acid, gallic acid, as potent, maybe potent weapons against the pandemic event of today, by reinvigorating the defensive mechanisms of the immune system. Immunity boosters, uh, immunity boosters may, blah, 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 by stimulating the proliferation of T cells, B cells, neutrophils, neutralizing the free radicals, inhibiting the immunosuppressive agents, and promoting cytokine production. Presently, antiviral therapies include several lead compounds, such as biacillin, uh, I can't remember, gly glycerin, glycerin, and theoflavin and herbicitin. Remember, those are uh, uh, herbicitin as far as cursed and herbicitin. Remember how the combination together, very predominant in lychee berry? Uh, to pr to proceed. All of which seem to act against SARS-CoV-2 via particular targets, i.e. the graphic that we looked for in the beginning, looked at in the beginning, such as blocking virus entry, attachment to host cell receptor, inhibiting viral replication, and assembly and release. Now remember, I'm going to go right into basically the tables right here. The objective is not to elucidate any particular uh, element of the research. It is primarily just to bring your attention to the research, the link, 
And therefore, therefore, you could then take the information and proceed as you see fit. But to proceed as follows. Table one. Look at this. Check this out. Now, I'm going to be reading through the graphic here right off the bat. But so, just so, so you could see. You see the copper, the iron, magnesium, selenium, vitamin A, C, C D, E, uh, the, you know, as far as all the way down the line, all the way down to zinc. The footnote information as well. That's what I'm trying to say as a compendium. They looked at everything, everything, well, it appears to be mostly everything, back in July 2020. Now, there's table one, obviously, you see. I want to give you an idea how much foresight they had in reference to uh, the pitfalls in regard to mitigating the pandemic in reference to sars cov 2 Let's look at what they said, for example, if we go to, do, 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 this is graph right here, the inhibition of S protein, spike protein, and ACE2. Again, recall the date, July 15th, 2020. That's what makes it so amazing. See the little highlight information I have there, it's receptor binding domain and so on and so forth. This was back a long, long time ago and it's finally going to publish today. A mystery. What did you say? All right. Proceed as follows. Table two. Now I see the references. I see the studies in reference to that. Incredible. Incredible. This is going to be in 4K when it finally finishes rendering on YouTube. But still just the same. You could pause at any time just in case. Uh, but I'll have the link for you to the full study. Uh, to obviously make it much, much easier. But just in case. And then... Let's go to table three. Look at that. Everything down the line. This is not only just uh, per se useful for individuals as reference to research on their own, but it's also for other medical professionals as far as giving them a clue where they could head, where they can go in reference to looking at future domains of research themselves. That is just incredible and incredibly amazing overall. And that's table one, two, and three. Now let's go down the line. Let me get rid of this page right here. And all right, I showed you this in reference to the S proteins, as far as the spike proteins per se. And now again, let's go to the next graphic itself because it actually continues down with table three. Now you see exactly as far as how the little circle there, as far as the other elements, and where it helps protect the body immunologically uh, in regard to particularly the pandemic event of today. It's amazing. Again, my, my objective here is not to elucidate or focus on any one element. It is primarily just getting the information out there because unfortunately, for whatever reason, all I could say is the research like this, I didn't find in any research journals except on the National Centers for Biotechnology and Information, or NCBI, which to me was highly disappointing because this is a major, major uh, work, I should say. All right, now also follow, as we follow per se, Let's go now to the conclusion. The conclusion that we're looking at is a review establishes the role of phytonutrients as immunity boosters and different phytochemicals are also used against COVID-19 because their antiviral activity. It is crystal clear with this study that an acceptable amount of nutraceuticals, I'm only quoting, and phytochemicals can improve the resistance against several infections. So the deficiency of immunity intensifiers, now keep in mind the wording, they're saying the deficiency they're not saying the utilization of taking more than is needed. They say if it's low, henceforth, you leave yourself vulnerable to certain problems. The deficiency of immunity intensifiers can be disastrous for the immune system. Unquestionably, the simplest way to reinvigorate the immune system is to intake nutrients that act as immunity booster tonics. And after nutrients, phytochemicals are the best. And both can be used as powerful weapons against the pandemic event of today. But if the immune system fails to cope with the virus, then antivirals serve as a marvelous therapy against the viral infections. The use of antivirals is to solicit, solicit both direct antiviral impressions against viruses and specific immune cell activation. The present review posits, posits, positions, that natural antivirals, my headset's going down here, sorry about that, the natural antivirals may act on different targets of SARS-CoV-2 to impede infection and afford efficient treatment. Compounds from natural origin may therefore play a significant role in the management of anti-SARS-CoV-2 therapy, but additional research is required to better understand the mechanics in depth. And that is just an incredible, incredible compendium of information. And of course, now with many breakthrough infections, a reference to vaccines and so on and so forth, 
the information here is even more valuable potentially than it was back then. Because now, with an ever-changing dynamic or terrain per se, basically working towards centering the immune system can yield a tremendous potential, as you see I'm parsing my words cautiously, in basically mitigating any potential negative outcome in reference to whatever that pandemic event of the day is. Again, links will be there, incredible research. I wanted to make sure my wording was careful, uh, not direct per se, not to basically trigger any potential um, restriction of information uh, from these researchers to you. And the links will be there too, so you can research it on your own. But my primary objective was just simply to get the information to you, so something be in your arsenal of tool chests of information that can yield you tremendous benefit for you and those around you potentially in the future today as well as any other unforeseen circumstances. Gratitude to the researchers. This is incredible. Again, my only regret is it took so long to actually be published for whatever reason, uh, but still just the same. They, they deserve a tremendous amount of applause in reference to what they did, what they accomplished, and what they compiled, just so they can get the information to you as well. They're not making any money. They're just free information that they're proceeding to, uh, they're trying to get to you so you can help you or many of the medical professionals can basically research further on their own to help all of society. Gratitude, thank you, and always, as always, humbled for you watching. I'll catch you all the long goodbye, typical long goodbye. And I'll catch you all next time. See you then.